Hey everybody, this is Jake at P3. Ethanol is a very cost effective way for you to add plenty of power to your vehicle and in this video we're going to show you how you can read that on your P3 gauge. There are two main ways that you can tune with ethanol on your vehicle. One is going to be an ethanol blend tune where basically you and your tuner discuss where you're going to line up for what percentage would be safe for you to run. So let's say it's E30. When you go to the gas station, you need to shoot for an E30 end result. So if you already have some fuel in your tank, you gotta do a little math, you're shooting for E30. The second way is going to be a flex fuel tune, and that's when your sensor is actually tied into the ECU, so you don't have to guess. Your computer always knows what percentage of ethanol you have live at that moment. We're gonna start on our Golf R with an ethanol blend tune. Now our friends at Unitronics supplied us with a stage two tune for this, also a nice big intercooler. Both have been working great for us. But John over at Unitronic has let us know that with our setup, we can safely run up to E20. So we're going to not be just an E20 blend. We don't have specific tunes based on ethanol or 93 octane, but we can safely run up to E20. So we'd like to add an ethanol sensor to that so we can see it on our gauge and know where we're at on our ethanol content. On cage G8 here, we're gonna add a full flex fuel setup. That means we're gonna run the output from the ethanol sensor, not only to our gauge, but also to the ECU. This has an ON3 NA cam and Bob Morrison over at ON3 tuned to this car. So we're gonna have him add a flex fuel tune after we tie the ethanol content into the ECU. And on this car, and maybe on your car as well, you'll need to check with your tuner. We're gonna have to add a larger fuel pump and fuel injectors as well. So you'll need to check on those items to make sure you're in the clear. But we do know what we need for this car and we know what we need for this car. Let's go ahead and get started on both of them. We'll get started here with our cheap R, Golf R, it's missing the bottom half of the bumper. I'm not really sure how that happened. I think the splitter's gone. The whole front bumper's gone, no joke. <laughs> anyway, we'll do a brief overview of what we're gonna go through here. Open up your engine bay. First thing we need to do is find your fuel line. And if you don't know which one your fuel line is, we've got a trick for that. You can actually use a water bottle. Put the water bottle on your suspect fuel line, turn your ignition on, your fuel pump should come on momentarily. And you're either one, gonna have a bunch of fuel in your bottle and you'll know which one your fuel line is, or you may have a mess if you have the wrong line disconnected. After you've determined that, we're gonna find a suitable place to install our ethanol sensor. On this car, we can see right here on this middle fuel line, this is our fuel supply to the high pressure fuel pump. So this one right here with the white dashes on it, we wanna put our, our ethanol content sensor somewhere in here. And you could either just cut this with a knife and clamp directly to either side of this, and that would work just fine in both cases as long as your clamp is nice and tight and you've got all the hose pulled up to this bump here. We have opted to use a couple of these quick connects just for the sake of convenience. And so what these do is they are designed to clip right on to both ends of this sensor. And this is a GM Continental ethanol sensor with 3 8 fuel line and then these are designed to work with 3 8 fuel line where they just clip like that and now it can't come off. On the other end we have a nice barb fitting where we can cut our hose and slide the hose over. That way after we have these, this installed in the car we can depress these two tabs here and this part will stay on but then you can easily disconnect your fuel line if you need to purge some fuel out or clean the ethanol sensor or anything weird like that um, you'd be able to do much easier. We'll get started with that and move on after we have the ethanol sensor mounted. First thing we wanna do is verify that we have the correct fuel line and we can do that with a water bottle. And now I know this is the correct one, but we'll just go through and do this process quickly. Take this clamp off. This is our low pressure supply from the tank. And you'll probably want a rag underneath. Now you can, you can take the fuse out for your fuel pump and run the engine until it, it uh, dies and that will dissipate the fuel pressure or you can just tuck a rag under there and gently disconnect it like that and you're good. So what we can do, if we're not sure if this is our fuel line or not, take a clean water bottle, and put the fuel line down in that water bottle and tuck it in a place so that it will sit. Now you can cycle your ignition just to the on position, not to cranking, and your fuel pump will come on and should push a bunch of fuel into your bottle with clean fuel. And if that's the case, you have the correct line. If not, you need to go check another line until you do get a supply of fuel when you turn the ignition on. Next, we want to determine how to cut the fuel line. I would suggest if you're using the quick connects, put those on, hold that up next to the fuel line. You're going to cut and see approximately how much you need to cut to install the sensor. So we're looking at about there and there, like our first cut, point of no return. 
and you do want this to be a nice clean right angle cut. You might want to leave yourself a little extra, make your second cut. It's always easier to go longer and then cut more off later. It's a little harder to add fuel hose back on. The old measure twice, cut once. Now we can slide our clamps over each side, being mindful of where the bolt is going to end up when you're done, so that way you have access to tighten it. These, uh, some of them do have a little arrow, but the fuel can flow either way. It's just measuring the content. It doesn't matter which way it's flowing. So figure out which way makes more sense to mount yours. I think we're going to go this way. So the wires point towards the back. Insert these quick connect fittings into your fuel line. Should be a nice snug fit. So it might be a little difficult to push them in, but make sure they're fully seated. One thing you will want to do after you make your fuel line connections is cycle your ignition a couple times. This is going to help purge any air out of the system. And it's also going to reveal if you have a fuel leak or not. So cycle ignition, go out, check, and make sure your lines are dry, your clamps are tight, everything. And then if you're not, you should be in good shape. Now that we've got our wiring all finished up, all that's left to do is go ahead and configure the gauge so it knows that the ethanol sensor is there. So go ahead and enter config by holding both buttons. Once it switches over to the first setting, DTC, we can tap the right button to cycle to A1.N. That's analog input one, that's the brown wire. We can tap the left button and we wanna tap until it says EC. A1.EC is ethanol content. Additionally, if you hook the blue wire up, you can turn A2 to FT for fuel temperature, which we did not hook that up on this car. So we'll go back to N, save and exit by holding the right button down. And now we can start the car. And now we're reading E10. One thing I would like to go over and note is how to load test your power and ground circuit. So if you can come in with me here, we are at our ethanol sensor. Everything has already been wired up and we want to verify that we have 12 volts power on this red wire at this pin. And we wanna make sure that we have a solid ground on this black wire at this pin. We don't wanna test if it's good back where we tapped the chassis ground and the 12 volt power, we wanna know right here. And the best way you can do that is by using a paper clip, or if you've got them, little wires, I made these little wires up um, to probe these connections. And so we're gonna put the red one in the 12 volt power. We're gonna put the black one in the ground. And then we're just going to use a test lamp here and we're gonna simply clamp these on. And on a test lamp, it doesn't matter which way it goes because it's just a filament. You can do this with a turn signal bulb or any other little bulb. But now, if we turn the ignition on and this lights up, we know for a fact we have power and ground all the way out to here. So I'm gonna go turn the ignition on real quick. And we can see that the bulb lights up, meaning that we have 12 volts power all the way at the end. Now, if we do that same test, Another way, and what many people end up doing, even though they're well-intentioned, they're not sure that they're missing stuff, is if we go and say, I'm gonna clamp here on my test light, and then I wanna go do 12 volts power. Well, if I have a bad ground here, if that's not a good ground, even if I have 12 volts here, it's not gonna work. Just like that also, if I do have 12 volts and this lights up here, we don't know that my ground is still good. So we're only testing the power circuit by doing this. But if we use this ground and this power and the bulb lights up, we know we have 12 volts all the way out at our ethanol sensor and likewise for our ESVA. So test here at the connector with it disconnected. Don't test back where you tapped because we don't know that the power is making it all the way to the end. Now that we've got the Golf R buttoned up, let's step over to the G8 and see what we have going on under the hood. This one's going to be a little more complex just because the fuel line comes up against the firewall and our fuel rail connection is over here. They're very close together, so we don't have a lot of room to put the sensor in there. We may need to move it over in this general area to give us some slack to run our fuel hose. After that's done, we need to run the wiring through the firewall, just like the Golf R, but we also need to run a wire all the way around the engine bay to the front opposite corner under the fuse box where the PCM is located. And we're going to have to populate a vacant pin on one of the PCM connectors, and that is going to be the input for the ethanol connection. So we just wrapped up under the hood of the G8. We've got our ethanol sensor signal going to the PCM here. That harness wraps around and is hidden with the factory harness all the way back through here around the back of the engine, and it comes all the way over to here where our sensor is, and that is that same wire. We've also got our 
harness for the ethanol sensor already run through the firewall. We've got our red 12 volt power, our black chassis ground, and our white signal wire. And now these just need to be wrapped up and plugged into our sensor, which is also plumbed in from the factory lines. And then all we need to do out here is wrap this harness up with some protective tape, connect our signal to the PCM, and then go under the dash to finish wiring out the ESVA. That brings us to the interior under the dash where we pass these same three wires right through the firewall. We've got our purple, which is the signal from the ethanol sensor, which is also teed into the PCM. We have our red 12 volt power, and we have our black chassis ground. Those are gonna run right into our ESVA. But our signal is gonna be the white wire. Black is chassis ground, red is 12 volt power, and then the last remaining wires are gonna be our outputs, which are brown ethanol content and blue fuel temperature. Those are gonna go directly into our P3 gauge harness, which I have sitting right here. Blue will go to blue, brown will go to brown. Fuel temp is optional, so you do not have to connect the blue wire if you don't want to. So the only other two remaining wires, and I've teed these together, are both the ESVA and the ethanol sensor out under the hood. Both need a switch 12 volt power source, so I've tied those together, power from the ethanol sensor, power from the ESVA, into one power wire and then I have the ground from the ethanol sensor and the ground from the ESVA tied into one ground wire. I am going to run that to a chassis ground under the dash, and then I will also run this to a switch power under the dash, and then everything will be connected and we will be ready to configure the gauge to set up the ethanol reading. Now that everything is hooked up, all we need to do is set up our config menu. And since we did the V3 on the other gauge, I'll do the V2 style on this one. So we'll scroll over to A1, which is the brown wire, tap the left button until it says Y, and then tap the right button. And now we need to set our decimal point. For ethanol, we don't want a decimal point, so tap the left button until it's all nines with no decimal point. Tap the right button. This is gonna be our low value. Right now it's set to 735. We want it to be zero. Okay, so we've got that set to zero, which is gonna be 0%. Now we push the right button, which is gonna be our high value. We want that to be 100 for 100%. Okay. All right, now we've got it set to 100%. Tap the right button to go to the next setting. This is our bar graph low setting. This value is going to be limited to the range of your sensor. So since we selected zero to 100, we can only go from zero to 100. So we'll set the bar graph low to zero. That's where zero bars will be illuminated across the top. Okay, and now we're gonna do our bar graph high, which we want to be 100. So that will be when all 10 bars are illuminated. There we go. And then A2 is going to be also set to Y. And we wanna do our decimal point, which for temperature, we don't need a decimal point. We want low to be negative 40. So there's negative 40, that's the minimum value of the temperature sensor in the ethanol sensor. Now we need to do our high value, which we want it to be 257 uh, Fahrenheit. Then we'll do our bar graph low, which is gonna be zero again. And now we're limited to our range, zero. And then we wanna set our bar graph high to the same max value, which is 257. All right, now we've got that set. And that concludes the analog setup, doing it the V2 style. Now we can go ahead and start the car. You will note that on V2 settings, you do not see the title ethanol or fuel. It's gonna say A1 underscore N. So we can see this is 11% ethanol. We tap the right button, we go to AN2, which is our fuel temp. We can see 86 degrees. That is going to be the major difference between the V2 and the V3. The V2 has the title AN underscore one for analog one, no matter what you have it set to. But for the V3, you can title that as ethanol or fuel temp or whatever you hook it up as. So there you have it. Whether you're running an ethanol blend or a full-on flex fuel tune, you can read that ethanol percentage with your P3 gauge. If you have any questions about what you saw in this video, please let us know in the comments below or you can email support at p3cars.com. Please like, subscribe, and share these videos so other people can learn about our gauges. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks, guys.